Hello there, thank you for staying with us and welcome to Channels Beam on Channels Television. I'm Victor Mathias and today on the program, Nigerians actually woke up to the shocking dethronement of the former Emir of Kano, Mohamed Sanusi II, by the Kano state government and his relocation to Nasrallah state as tradition. Now, quote and unquote, demands there can be two kings in a town. However, since that incident, there has been a debate by Nigerians as to whether or not dethroned chiefs and emirs be allowed to move freely or be confined to a specific space as the constitution guarantees the rights to freedom of all citizens. Now, on this edition of the program, we will look at what should take precedence in cases like this and also find out if this will join other traditional practices that have been abolished as a result of civilization as well as constitutional provisions. Plus, we speak to a Nigerian living in China to hear his plight in the wake of the coronavirus that has been declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization. But let's first see what made the social media trends in the past week before we get into the discussion. COVID-19 remained a global trend. However, this week saw wife of Canadian Prime Minister Sophie Trudeau, owner of Olympiaco Football Club, Evangelos Marinakis, and Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta, and actor Tom Hanks and his wife, among those who contracted the disease. The spread of the virus led to the suspension of top-flight football matches across Europe and basketball games in the United States. Building houses, shops and vehicles were destroyed after an explosion rocked the Abuleado area around Festic Town in Amuo Dauphin local government area of Lagos State. The massive blast rocked neighboring areas and destroyed buildings including a school. Well, you can also be a part of the conversation. Just tweet at us using the hashtags, hashtag channels TV, hashtag channels beam, hashtag tradition versus civilization, as well as at channels TV, at channels beam, as well as at Victor underscore MBIDI. But let's uh, now meet our guests who would be making us, uh, who would be joining us to look at today's topic. And first of all, we have right here in the studio, Edward Israel Aide. He is a marketing communications consultant who comments on social political issues affecting Nigerians and how these impact our perception as a nation. Um, Edward, it's a pleasure to have you on the Thank program you. today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, we also have joining us uh, via phone from Kano State, Northwest Nigeria, Ali Isa. He is the coordinator of Ariwa Foundation, a social, economic, and cultural organization advocating for protection of cultural sites in northern Nigeria. He is also a development activist, currently leading the largest network of grassroots citizens dedicated to tracking government and international aid spending in northern Nigeria to promote transparency and accountability. Uh, Mr. Ali Isa, thanks as well for joining us on the program. Anyways, we'll get to that. Of course, but Edward kicks out this conversation uh, for us. So there was just so much, you know, um, discussions, you know, after the MIA of Kano was, um, you know, dethroned now. And so the issue of his right to movement, which has been termed as a tradition, mm. has been also in the airwaves. And then he went to court to enforce that right. And, you know, today he has his freedom, so to freedom. speak, and he's in Lagos. And so the thing is, that's one tradition that has been on and on, you know, in the past. Um, emirs or chiefs or kings that have been deposed, you know, have been sent to solitary confinement, so to speak, mm. now. But now that is not, I don't think it's going to happen because any other person who mm. finds himself in that position already has a precedent. precedent. Yeah. So, I mean, is tradition going to be eroded? by civilization? I'll say over time, we 
have to come to terms with the realization that uh, globalization has changed a lot of political structures, uh, especially traditional political structures uh, in Nigeria. If you look at the role of traditional rulers in the pre-colonial era, it was almost as if they were the ones who were uh, administrating local government uh, on behalf of the monarch, on behalf of the colonial governments and all that. But over time, especially with the constitutional reviews, we found out that their roles have become more of um, like they're practically they're practically just like figureheads these days. To understand, uh, they derive their powers from whatever governors give to them. Uh, they really do not have so much influence beyond culture and conventions and local customs. And I think. As we evolve further uh, in democracy, in uh, modern government uh, institutions, you'll find out that their roles will become more and more ceremonial. And then we'll also find out that uh, the case you mentioned, there will be things like uh, customary, customary roles, customary, uh, customary uh, rights will have to give way to Constitutional, constitutional, yeah, do you understand? constitutional yeah, rights, do you understand? Yeah. Because you find a situation where someone is deposed, I would uh, believe that the reason why that custom was in place is so that you don't have two kings uh, in the same kingdom or you do not have a situation where the king, uh, the, the, the post king is trying to then gain support to return to the throne. Do you understand? Or but, from a parallel government. Or from a so parallel speak, government. Yeah. But nowadays you find out that you can't really tell someone that uh, you didn't say that he committed a crime against the state. Uh, in the case of uh, MISNC, it was because they said he was act of insubordination. The they understand. Yeah. So you really did not sentence him. A court did not sentence him to be sent to prison All or right. to be under house arrest. Yeah. <laughs> All know? right, let's quickly um, get to hear from Ali Isa, who is joining us from Kano State via phone. Um, Ali Isa, once again, thanks for joining us on the program. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so again, um, we're looking at the fact that um, a constitution and civilization is pretty much beginning to erode some of the uh, customs and the traditions that Nigerians have held in high esteem for years. And that is, I would say, you know, becoming a concern amongst so many people. But uh, what do you think? Do you think that it, at the tail end, tradition will be relegated? Um, at the expense, of course, uh, of, of the constitution and civilization? Uh, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. If you look at uh, the culture and the tradition in regards to what the nation have done, uh, we, can, we can look at it in, like, in two ways, two sides of the coin. One, uh, civilization has affected like, the culture and tradition and the, the constitution in a positive way, and as well as it affected uh, the culture, it affected the culture and the tradition in the, in the negative way. Uh, in the positive way, we found out that there are some certain, uh, like before the advent of the constitution or before the colonial power came in, uh, some citizens, especially around in those area, in some areas, they don't enjoy like much freedom and liberty. Considered to when the constitution came and when the election, when the other decision came, like uh, when civilization came. But on the other end, we found out that uh, civilization has done, uh, let's say, more harm than good to, uh, to, to the culture and the tradition. If you look at it, like uh, a very good example in history is like uh, Kano State now. Kano State is one, of the, is one of the states that we have in Nigeria. Or even in Africa, that has over a thousand year tradition of uh, tradition and culture of let's say the monarchy, and where we have a centralized system of government from the federal, that is the Enya, let's say, uh, like, let's say from the Enya down to the Enya, the Enya uh, has its own council, and those council and each and every council is like uh, in the council we have ministers, we have the ministers. Let, let me just. Let, let, yeah, me, let, let me quickly butt in, um, Ali. Let me quickly butt in. Uh, so, so apart from the case of the apart from the case of the MA, are there like traditions that that um, let me say civilization now has taken over in Kano? Yeah. So, like so maybe Durbas or something, perhaps in that line. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you look at it now, the this is especially part of the this thing that we have we have heritage sites. 
We have heritage sites like uh, sites where there are where people respect so much, where people uh, where people look at those places as places uh, where they are very respected by just by everyone. But with the coming of uh, successive governments and this and this issue of civilization, we found out that those those things or those artifacts that we revert so much or that people respect and look up to them so much, they are being eroded daily and constantly. Subsequently, by either uh, written by the civilization or by provisions of the constitution. Um, let's say, like uh, in Kano State now, we have the great city walls. There are those defensive walls that were built more than uh, more than 500 years ago. So those walls were there to protect the citizens, or to protect the people in the city from external attacks. But you found out that uh, nowadays, like uh, from from 20, let's say from 30 to 30 years back, uh, let's say 30 years uh, forward now, we found out that those uh, those defensive walls have been uh, have been eroded or have been encouraged daily. The Christian government has been allocating land, uh, let's say for development. But okay. In other countries now, those those those. I'll I'll come I'll come back I'll come back to you I'll come back to you uh, um, Ali on that. Um, speaking of the Great Wall, I mean, what about do you know any other? Um, uh, praxis that you know is finding its way out. I mean, like you just been mention of one, you mm. know, a site where now they're you know allocating land, so people are pretty much encroaching on that mm. that ancient tradition. Are there any that you know? Of? Um, I'll say that um, Ali is very right. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of our cultural sites uh, are being uh, eroded because of new developments. They understand, and what has happened is that uh, I can't really think of any particular one right now, but I just uh, know that the, the thing about modern systems and tradition is that it's a double-edged sword. It's good in some side, it's yeah. bad in some side. Yeah. You find situations where practices that were dangerous to children, that were dangerous to women, are being abolished in place of modern theories, modern mm. belief systems. Mm. They understand, which are very, very in line with uh, modern realities, they understand. Uh, you also find that by removing some of those cultural practices, we're also destroying history. We're also uh, destroying things that we can look back on tomorrow and teach f uh, future generations about the story of where they are from. You find in, uh, in Europe and in other parts of the world, they've been able to keep modern, uh, modern governments and their uh, history and their monarchy side by side mm -hmm. in a way that there's almost a, romant uh, a romantic story behind it. Like it's, there's an ideal. You see the Queen of England and mm -hmm. then you feel a certain way. But down here, we've come to look at kings as just uh, maybe people we go to when the issues with land, uh, when there's time for political campaigns Election, yeah. and so, all that. Yeah, so one of the things you mentioned that struck me is, you know, that um, those traditions that affect uh, the women and the children. Mm. And um, we have pretty much like a list of things. So uh, some of those things, you know, the killing of twins. Twins, yes. You know, that's mm -hmm. one, you know, tribal marks. We no longer see tribal marks mm. <laughs> um, yes. anymore. Yes. You know, burying kings with men, mm -hmm. you know, that has also... Uh, been abolished, um, the girl circumcision, even though we still have that campaign still going on, you yes, know, against uh, female genital mutilation. mutilation. Um, and then, uh, oh, this one sounds pretty bizarre, how you betroth um, a woman <laughs> to, you know, a brother of her deceased husband. And all of these, you know, have uh, pretty much uh, gone down the drain. And of course, like you said, it's a double-edged sword. Ali also agrees mm -hmm. with that. But um, I have to say thank you for joining us on the program, Edward thank Israel, you. IAD Marketing Communications Consultant, thank as you. well as Ali Isa, who joined us via phone from Kano. Um, he is the uh, coordinator of Arewa Foundation. We'll take a break on the program. And when we return, we'll speak with a Nigerian who is living in China on his plight as the WHO um, declares the coronavirus a pandemic. Please stay with us. Thank you.